the heavenly corporation of God is a paradise and modern office with numerous departments and employees who are literally working tirelessly handling complex tasks in managing earth. However, there comes a moment when God decides to destroy the planet as it seems futile. Two angels step up to save humanity, given only two weeks to accomplish this task, attempting to reconcile the irreconcilable. Did she just say, illiterate? It looked like his eyes weren't moving. The God watches TV news about the raging catastrophes on the earth and with tears of affection listens to the gratitude from a victorious rally driver when he's interrupted with a message about an upcoming meeting to address the humanity's problems. But God's assistant Sanjay dismisses those gathered. The creator has more important matters to attend to. Meanwhile, in the Heaven Corporation, a junior angel Eliza Hunter is assigned to the Department of Heart Prayers. She gazes upon a gloomy room where an angel named Craig is attempting to fulfill the prayer of a woman who lost the car keys. To avoid drawing attention with a quick solution, he melts each snowflake individually. Eliza suggests engaging in something more pressing, while Craig marks the case as resolved. She discovers a prayer from a person surrounded by wolves, yet Craig deems it impossible and elevates it upstairs, stating that only God can save the unfortunate soul. However, God is distressed by the decrease in followers on Earth. Meanwhile, two million prayers flood into the department. Craig rejoices, thinking his work will now proceed faster. As he steps away, Eliza finds a prayer from a dying man in need of water and activates a rain mode. An alarm immediately sounds. In her attempt to save one, she has inadvertently caused a flood, leading to the deaths of thousands. The department is overwhelmed with new prayers, and Craig reassures the distressed Eliza that everyone faces failures on their first day. While Eliza attempts to present hundreds of prayers to God, Craig notices a prayer from a man who lost a glove and begins fulfilling it. Eliza rushes straight to God, reminding him that he is the one who created Earth and bears responsibility for it. In response, the Creator, for the first time in many years, calls a general assembly of the corporation and announces his decision to destroy the planet that brings too many problems. While the angels struggle to comprehend this news, God tells Sanjay that he will build a restaurant in place of Earth. Department heads receive orders to destroy the instruments of production, resulting in beautiful sunrise rises, rainbows, and advancements in animals and humans being discarded into the bin. Eliza once again approaches God, trying to persuade him to give Earth one last chance. She proposes a wager to God. She will fulfill one of the hopeless prayers, and in return, he spares the planet. God grants her a two-week deadline. Joyful, Eliza rushes to Craig, and the two of them begin searching for a prayer they can successfully fulfill to win the bet. Eliza discovers the prayers of two young people who have feelings for each other but struggle with shyness. God agrees to count her accomplishment only if the young couple shares a kiss and initiates the timer for the planet's final hours. On the following day, the angelic pair seeks a way to bring the two future lovers together given that their compatibility is at 98%, which offers hope. They decide to provide a sign and the potential catalyst becomes a badminton shuttlecock as both individuals are passionate about the game. Craig blows the shuttlecock through Laura's window, however she doesn't understand the hint and tosses it away. Eliza suggests orchestrating a fateful encounter, requiring Laura to be injured and Sam to experience an appendicitis rupture. They will be taken to the hospital where they will fall deeply in love. The angel finds a watermelon resting on the windowsill of Laura's house, which the angel wants to drop on the girl's head. Craig intervenes, objecting to this course of action. The two of them argue and Eliza walks out to the balcony, looking mournfully at the environment. Craig apologizes and proposes a revised plan, luring the couple to a restaurant. Eliza sabotages Laura's mobile provider satellite, preventing her from ordering food. Laura goes outside, smells shawarma, and heads towards Sam's favorite spot. Suddenly, Sam turns towards a pizzeria. Craig ruptures the pizzeria owner's appendix, causing him to collapse, and leading to a power outage in the building. Sam redirects to his restaurant, but ends up at a different table. Craig summons a gust of wind carrying pollen towards the young couple. They sneeze and finally see each other. They arrange to meet at a different cafe, exchanging phone numbers. However, Laura arrives before Sam and encounters a different guy at the cafe. Meanwhile, TV News reports the unfairly affected owner of the pizzeria. 
Laura is charmed by her new acquaintance and agrees to spend the day with him, greatly disappointing the angels. They try to sabotage the emerging relationship and discover that Laura's new crush is Mason, a blogger advocating for putting away phones and connecting with each other through threads. Oddly enough, his threat theory touches Laura's heart. Meanwhile, Sam struggles to send a message to Laura. Eliza tries to encourage Craig with new ideas when Sanjay enters the department surrounded by journalists. Sanjay used to work there and was considered the best. The angels watch Mason invite Laura to China, intending to extend the largest threat there. Eliza suggests bringing in Sanjay for help, but Craig has already managed the task, causing a flood in China. Meanwhile, Sanjay talks about his new job, where he has to be the right hand of God. Suddenly, the creator calls him. He burned his hands and can't go to the bathroom by himself. On Earth, Mason complains to Laura that he gave up his apartment and now has nowhere to stay. Laura invites him to her place. Eliza rushes to Sanjay and Craig reluctantly follows her, asking for help from his rival. However, God summons the administrator again who flees, leaving a humiliated Greg to open the door, revealing Sanjay's true actions to the journalists. The administrator hides in his office. Craig apologizes, acknowledging Sanjay as the best in the field, and asks for help. Sanjay takes action, learns that Mason's father is the president of an oil company and engineers an accident at an oil rig, leading the company to bankruptcy. Mason's father cuts him off pocket money, and Mason throws a fit in front of Laura, causing his romantic aura to fade, revealing his true character. In the evening, Mason bombards Laura with messages, but she suddenly remembers Sam and sends him a text. Sam is elated, while Sanjay realizes that his place is in the Department of Heart Prayers. Later, he shows Eliza that in his earthly life he was a prince, and she admits to being a warrior. As for Craig, he spent his entire life in a swamp, protecting his tribe from a non-existent swamp monster. Sanjay suggests luring the couple to a joint party, while Craig feels inadequate, as everything seems to work out perfectly for Eliza and Sanjay. The senior administrator of God, Rosie, tries to persuade Sanjay to return, but instead, Craig is called to go. Meanwhile, the man chosen by God as an apostle visits a psychoanalyst. Frustrated, God orders Craig to strike the disobedient one with a hurricane. The angels observe Sam and Laura's behavior at the party and decide to increase the alcohol content in their drinks. Sanjay cranks up the speaker volume, bottles crash, and the punch bowl fills with alcohol. However, the couple is now too intoxicated to start a relationship. On Earth, the hurricane destroys only the house of a person known for their charitable activities. Sanjay rushes to Craig, who is holding back his impulses and is crucial to the department. But Craig refuses to return and continues to agonize, listening to the news anchor's outrage about the injustice of such punishment to devout people. Later, the victim appeals to God. He does not want to be a prophet. He has a lot to do on Earth. God orders to remove the dissenter. Upset, Craig smashes communication equipment and returns to the department, where the angels try to find a way out of the situation. Craig starts a fire in the house where the party is taking place, and Sam leads Laura outside, where they agree to meet again. Satisfied, angels watch as Sam's grandmother approves of his actions, but then notice flashing numbers. The woman has only two hours left to live. This, of course, delays the lover's meeting. The angels realize that they need to delay the time of death and go to the Lady Death herself. The kind lady explains that each person is assigned a random lifespan and dying later is not possible. One can only apply for a postponement, but it needs God's signature. The three of them go to the upper rooms where they accidentally discover that God cannot read. Eliza suggests deceiving God, who meets them with the cocktails they invented for the new restaurant, and Sanjay immediately suggests he sign an alcohol license. But then they witness God's anger, realizing that the chef tried to deceive him, and he banishes him to hell. God confesses that he can't read without glasses. Expecting anger, Eliza still hands over the document. God is about to sign it when Rosie stops him and advises the team to bail as she's found a much better job and couldn't care less about Earth. Eliza convinces the woman that without her everything will collapse here and they will be punished. 
Then Rosie resorts to deception and makes God sign the document. The grandmother's lifespan is extended. Sam gets her approval for the date, and in the Department of Heard Prayers, a toast is raised to Rosie. The day comes when God decides to present the restaurant idea to the main investors, his parents, and heads to their home. Meanwhile, the angels find out that Lori and Sam are planning to go to the movies. However, when they learn which movie it is, they realize that a kiss won't happen there. During this time, the creator has lunch with his parents, brother and sister, who boast about their planets and announces the presentation of the new idea. The angels try to come up with another romantic date, and Rosie remembers the kiss cam, where an operator finds a couple in the stands and makes them kiss. Greg is horrified by this idea. Laura and Sam are too shy. However, the others love Rosie's suggestion and don't listen to objections. Meanwhile, the creator presents the future restaurant, while Laura informs Sam about the fire in the movie theater, and he tells her that basketball game tickets fell on his head. To prevent mishaps, the angels take measures to prevent other couples from entering the stadium. Someone's car breaks down, someone loses their tickets, and someone's health falters. In the end, Laura and Sam are the only couple in the stadium and confess their mutual attraction. Craig calls on his colleagues to abandon the idea because Laura and Sam are about to kiss on the round. He tries to disable the equipment, but he is restrained and locked in a closet. Meanwhile, the parents inform God that they are not ready to invest in his idea because only one of the nine planets he created has succeeded. At the stadium, the camera focuses on Sam and Laura, but they refuse to kiss in public. The team mascot approaches them, aggravating the situation. Just as Sam pushes the mascot away, Eliza bursts the appendix of the person in the mascot suit. The audience is horrified, they've killed Mr. Quackers. And God tries to explain to his parents the difference between a cow and a dog, and why the giraffe has a log instead of a neck. But the masterpiece is humans to whom God gave free will in the hope that they would accomplish great things. But alas, they turned out to be just like him. The creator looks sadly at the model of the earth. Everything was supposed to turn out better. Meanwhile, the angels release Craig from the closet and apologize to him, while Sam and Laura argue and go their separate ways. Suddenly, God confesses that he loves his planet despite its flaws and has no intention of blowing it up. He rushes to the Department of Heart Prayers to cancel the explosion. However, the spell sphere cannot be opened, so the only way is still to make Sam and Laura kiss. Eliza suggests bringing the couple together on the way home, and for that, they need to close the streets. But this requires the help of the entire management staff, who are already celebrating their resignation. Rosie reminds everyone that there is still 38 minutes until the end of the world and demands assistance. God also gets involved and strikes a lightning bolt in front of Laura. By deception, Sanjay leads the creator in another room, while the angels provoke the release of impurities, forcing people to change their path. But Sam again moves away from Laura, and Rosie suggests using the beetle management system. Craig agrees to take a risk, and wearing a special helmet, finds himself in a bee's body to guide Sam in the right direction. The insect frightens Sam, and he turns in the desired direction, while Craig scares the people around, pretending to be mad. Meanwhile, Sanjay leads God into a distant room, where he continuously presses the love machine button. At the same time, the others do everything to direct the couple towards each other. Finally, they end up on the same street. There are only 8 minutes left until the explosion when God notices that his machine is not connected to electricity. He grabs it and runs into the hole where the angels watch the budding kiss and turns on the machine causing an explosive effect. A cataclysm starts on the street, the wind pushes the lovers in different directions and the heavens go dark. An angry Sanjay admits his intention to get rid of the foolish useless god who is responsible for the destruction of an entire planet. Upset, the creator leaves, while on Earth, Sam finds Laura. The broadcast starts, and the angels frantically come up with a way to make the two people kiss, when Eliza suggests leaving them alone, because it seems that the couple is managing on their own. In the very last second, Laura kisses the guy, and the asteroid passes by Earth. The angels go to God to report that the planet is saved, and express hope that it all went according to his plan. However, the creator denies this assumption. 
Nevertheless, he's invited to a party in honor of saving the planet, which it turns out everyone loves. And while everyone is dancing, Eliza reminds them of one more tradition. They need to put a stamp of completion on the matter. The angels congratulate each other on their success, and Eliza agrees to dance with Craig. And the journalist, exhausted by the recent news, wishes people to hurry up and leave, as time is fleeting. It's almost a futile task to retell a comedy, as most of the jokes are simply impossible to describe. So watch and laugh, for time is fleeting.